Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're in Kilkenny and we're at St. Mary's Cathedral. It's spilling rain, lots of visitors, so let's go on inside. The construction of St Mary's Cathedral began after 1843 and continued through the famine years. The years of immigration, coffin ships, starvation and even despair because of the many thousands of our people who died from hunger and disease. And yet the cathedral continued to grow, thanks to the pennies these poor people gave, often denying themselves of a meal. The church is built on the site of the old mansion Burles Hall, which was the earliest foundation of St. Kieran's College. St. Mary's Cathedral stands out as a landmark on the highest point of Kilkenny City. It is in Gothic style and built of local limestone. On the 18th of August 1843, the foundation stone was laid by Most Reverend Dr Kinsla. On the 4th of October 1857, the cathedral was consecrated by the Most Reverend Dr Edmund Walsh, Bishop of Osry. The relic of St Clement, which was brought from the catacombs of Rome, was placed under our Blessed Lady's altar and the relics of St Cosmos and Damien were placed under the High Altar. After the consecration, the bishop celebrated Mass in Our Lady's Chapel. In 1977, the cathedral underwent many changes. New lighting, heating systems were installed, the floor under the dome was beautifully elevated and richly carpeted. The new altar with its bronze figures depict the Annunciation, the birth of Christ, the flight into Egypt, the healing of the sick, the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, the Last Supper, the meeting of Martha and Mary, the resurrection, crucifixion and ascension.
Perhaps the most unusual feature is the wax encased relics of St. Victoria, which are on display in the side altar. St. Victoria was born in Rome around 235 AD. She was promised to a rich young nobleman, Eugenius, but she refused to marry him or to sacrifice to idols. Eugenius became enraged, took her to a country villa and tried to starve her to death. During this time, St. Victoria prayed for many and converted many by her prayers and suffering. St. Victoria escaped and joined a group of Christians. While preparing for her first Holy Communion, the pagan king Constantine had a sword plunged into her heart. She was only 14 and a half years old. This wax figure with a chalice that contains St. Victoria's blood was bestowed to Bishop Dr. Kinsler in Rome by the Pope around 1845 as a gift to honour the consecration of St. Mary's Cathedral. Another story goes that sisters Victoria and Anatolia were arranged for marriage to noble Roman non-Christians. The sisters refused to wed and devoted their lives to God. Their angry suitors had them tortured in hopes of breaking their fate. Refusing to worship idols, the sisters were executed. Their guard, so moved by their example, converted before he too was executed. Legend states that Victoria's executioner was immediately struck with leprosy and died just six days later, eaten by worms. The whole relic of St. Victoria are encased in this wax figure of St. Victoria herself. Lost stories from hundreds of years ago tell slightly different stories. Nevertheless, St. Victoria, like St. Adjutor in Wexford, attract thousands of visitors worldwide. So they have a, a lovely kind of a, a walkway. This is the back of St. Mary's Cathedral.
Right, so guys, I'm going to wrap the video up there. Um, if you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button. But for now, guys, from a very wet Kilkenny, take care. God bless, and I'll talk to y'all again soon.